Uh, hello, hello, everybody. This is No Name One One Seven Spore, and today I'm here for some, uh, hopefully, more peaceful from the depths gameplay. Assuming it will display, it should, right? Yeah, it should. There we go. But before I start, uh, there is something I need to do, and I'm gonna have a poll. Let me uh, move, or let me just adjust this slightly. There we go. I'm gonna have a poll. Which ship should I build? I'm starting it right now. Um, you can add an, or if you, uh, if, I'm greedy. If you give me five bits, you get an additional vote. But, <clears throat> yes, uh, I don't know what to build. So we have four options here. We could build A, which would be either Montreal or Toronto. Um, these two ships, I'm going to have share the same hull. However, uh, even though I'll have them share the same hull, they would be two different designs. So if A is picked, we do have an additional vote um, to do after it. For B, C, and D, however, those ships are, uh, you know, we build the first one uh, later on. The second one would be built using the uh, same hull. Just modified, especially heavily modified in the case of Cold Lake to Spruce Grove. But yes. So it's either we build... We build the 10,000 ton heavy cruiser. Well, a little bit above 10,000 ton heavy cruisers. In uh, terms of Montreal to Toronto. We could build the... Cold Lake, an older light cruiser converted into a fairly modern standard. We could build, what, a ski win of moderately older light cruiser converted to a modern standard. Or we could build, basically, an Atlanta-style uh, light cruiser with Kamloops. Uh, slash Abbotsford is, I guess, technically the class. Uh, or, you know... Uh, I, th I think it should actually be referred to as the Coquitlam class, because Abbotsford was never actually built in the campaign. So, those are your options. Pick which one you want to see me do. I'll have the results up. And then we'll, uh... After that, we'll get onto it. I will, uh, actually start booting up the game right now. I'm probably gonna make this a little smaller. That's still visible. Oh, what? Like, hi. Yeah, that's still very visible. All right, then it looks like we're about two thirds of the way through the poll. Do just I am. It's good for me to uh, get the game going at the same time, though. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but you know, thankfully, the poll is gonna take up even more time still. Oh, we're getting down to the. Uh, and down, uh, the poll's getting down pretty low. Don't have too much more time to vote. Okay, from the depths, please work. Okay, there we go, we're in the game. And the poll's gonna be up, so I can just let the poll expire and then hit designer mode. Well, 
Looks like it's a tie. So, one vote for uh, Montreal Toronto, one vote for uh, what is skewing. I will briefly take this down from the or from the screen. Got a tiebreaker. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the tiebreaker should be. I'll be hopping into designer mode in the meantime. I could run the poll again with only those two options. I mean, I'm prop. I, I know I'm definitely gonna have to load in some of my other ships. Ah, uh, so I'll I'll quickly load in Alberta, which I finished yesterday. Well, okay, technically she's not finished yet. Her guns aren't like functional or anything, but I don't care. So she's looking very nice right now. Uh, anyway, yeah, in terms of tiebreaker, I do have a coin flip. So, or a coin to flip. So I might just flip a coin here. Uh, the other good thing is... Okay. I could either flip a coin, or I could either run, like, a quick two-minute poll. Let's run a quick, uh, two-minute poll again. Bring this back up. I'll shrink it down somewhat to the bottom corner of the screen. Can you guys still see that well enough? Uh, let me see. That looks horrible. I can barely make out the text, so I'm going to say no, you guys cannot see that well enough. I'll make it larger, and then I'm going to decrease its opacity. Uh, properties. No, filters, filters, yes, filters. Uh, add. Where is it? Oh, come on. I know I can make this somewhat... You know, not completely, uh, not completely like this. Open image mask. All right, fine. I'm just leaving it up. Let's let's redo the poll. Uh, new results. So it's either uh, Wetaskiwin or Montreal or Toronto. So question: Which ship should? I build, since I see there's three people here now, I might be able to get more responses than just two. Uh, no, no additional bits to vote. Okay, which should build? Tie break. Montreal to Toronto, or C. Wet, uh, ski win. There we go. I should not have run that for five minutes. Um... I'll probably halt it, like, a lot earlier than that. As I, uh, hop around the ship and try to make sure that, um, I'm not really using that lower part portion of the screen. Or, you know, while it's going on, while the tiebreaker's going on, um, I do quickly see if I can get this to be, uh, a little bit transparent. So, crop pad, color key, color correction, chroma key, apply image mask, blend, render delay, scaling aspect, ratio, scroll, or sharpen. I don't think any of those are what I'm looking for. And of course, properties doesn't work. I know I have like this. This, color source chat. So if I go to filters there. Okay, it is color co correction then. It'll work. Filters, color correction. And then opacity, shift it down to like 50%. Is that still visible? That's readable. Barely, but it's readable. So yes, this will be the tie break. Um, and then once the tie break's decided, we'll decide which one to go with. Alright, actually, how much stream delay is there? How much? Uh, advanced video stats. 
listening to the broadcasters six seconds. So I'll count down. What I'll do is I'll count down and then wait seven seconds and then end it. All right. So let's go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Pull should be ending about now. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. Ending pull. This poll results have confused me. Yeah, this one, it seems like everyone voted for Montreal, so... We're going for Montreal, then. Alright, I do have uh, World Waves 2 up over here. Let me just grab a couple of screenshots from that so I can uh, just look over for reference. And I'm probably going to have to find some good reference. Wait, hold on. I had to do a second poll. Shit! Uh, because it's either Montreal or Toronto. So... <sighs> hold on. Okay, start the poll for five minutes, bring it back up, but this time I'll move it down like this. And let you guys see a little better. So of these two heavy cruisers, which one should I build? Thankfully the hull of them should be largely the same. They're about the same amount of tons. But yes, uh, I will need to know which one I should build. And while I'm doing that, uh, or while the poll is going on, I'm going to quickly go to Wikipedia. Could have just flipped a coin for this one. I could have. But I'm not. I'm going to go to Wikipedia and I'm going to start Googling some uh, heavy cruisers, such as, let's start with the county class uh, cruiser. And actually, what I should do is I should also take a quick look at the original designs for these ships and try to figure out where they were built. Okay. Montreal... Original design was built in Britain. Uh, Toronto, I assume, would also have been built in Britain? Yeah, both ships were built in Britain originally. So I should definitely be basing them on British cruisers. Which would be stuff like the uh, county class. Uh, the county class were... What, 10,400 average standard, 14,150 full... Did... Okay, I know Lieutenant Rainbow Slash made the, uh... Or made both of these designs. Did he literally just copy a, uh... A county? Is that literally what he did? With the Montreal? That's literally what he did, isn't it? Alright, I will be ending the poll in, again, doing the same thing as last time, but I'm going to start counting down from 10. So, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Poll should be ending for you guys right now. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. Ending poll. The winner is Montreal. We will be building the Montreal class cruiser here. Um, I might, tr I might try to save the hull design at a less complete state and then use that to build the Toronto class cruiser. I will need to quickly get my references in order, but once I have my references, I will be able to start working on this. So take that. Uh, just on a second, just post. Post it in here. And then we need to open up the design. So I do need to make sure that I have this 
all the all the correct facts down. I can just quickly look over and see the references. Because, you know, that's important. It's important to know what I'm building. And obviously it's a lot harder to do on stream than it is normally, given that I also have to have chat open and uh, can't take too much time dilly-dallying like I have been here at the start. So, okay, so flight installations, she has one air capacity, and there's the catapult. Okay. And then take this image, put it there. That should be good. Should allow me to get Montreal done. I can exit out of Ruler Waves 2 now. And that should be good. Um, I will have to just quickly be Googling some other cruisers. So let's probably take a look at the York class of cruiser, because they're... The York class is probably dimensionally more similar to what we have, given that I think Ruler Waves 2 uses uh, full displacement rather than standard. And the York class cruisers, you know, were about 10,400 full. Well, the counties were a bit bigger. Uh, if I look, counties were 180, 190 meters long overall. The York was 175 meters long overall. So I think we're probably looking at maybe a 180, 185 meter long ship here. And how wide are they? The beam is... A York's beam is 17. Uh, counties is 21. I'm thinking 19. Actually, no. General characteristics. Why not? That was Exeter. Sorry. Looking at that. The cylinder is overheated. It's disabled until it cools down. Oh, wow. Good job, Alberta. Uh, don't pull it from play. Just shut down the AI. Apparently my engines are not particularly well-crafted. They should be... They should have cooling, right? They should all have cooling. Is that correct? Yeah, there's no weird cooling access issues on Alberta. But anyway, yeah, slow, slow Alberta down. I guess I'll be looking, you know, primarily at the counties, Yorks. I should probably also look at the British light cruisers, just see if any of them are the same size. So, like a town class cruiser, for example. These were a bit bigger. Uh, beam length. Okay. So I think we are looking at about 180 meters long. Um... Probably 17 to 19 meters wide. I think is dimensionally what Montreal would be built at. Um, she... She looks to be... An, an attempt at building a county, but more on the hull size of a, uh, Exeter. Let me... Open the original images just in Chrome here. Actually, I can pull them out so I can also have chat open at the same time. So I'm having to really organize for this. It's very difficult when you have, you know, five different ships to choose from. And you're having your viewers pick the ship. So you have to get everything organized before you actually start building anything. And, you know, you can make sure you can swap between tabs well enough. And all of that. All right, there we go. Now I can see the chat and everything going on. So let's start. I believe she is a, uh, let me just check. Yeah, she is flat deck on top of belt, all or nothing. All right, uh, new vehicle. Actually, no, I need to load a vehicle. Canada ship starter is what I need to load. Actually, wait, no, 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 this is gonna be wrong. Because it's going to have some of the colors, it's not going to have all the colors. Uh, let's warp to it and see where we land. Massively, massively in front of it. 
Alright, so I want to move the spawn point a bit over. Because this is way behind where the center should actually be. Alright. So I'm going to start with lead. Painted red. And then I'm just going to get rid of all that. And all that. And finally get my mirror up. Alright. So... What we should do first is we should immediately start saving the vehicle. Uh, uh, hold on. I'll do CA Montreal. Just so that I don't accidentally save over anything, because that would be very bad. Alright, so our length is 68. We're trying to get to about 180. Um, but I am going to need to look up uh, county class or images for the, the county and York class cruisers. Just mostly for the hull shape, but I am going to need some references for the superstructure, too. And ultimately, yeah, references when building ships like this, they're important. Alright, so I'm looking at how the aft superstructure works, it, or not superstructure, the aft uh, underside of the hull works, it kind of curves upwards, they do have a very specifically shaped rudder, it looks like these are four shaft ships, so we will be sticking with four shafts, and if I real quickly look here in the Wikipedia page, um, the drought is, what, 5.2 meters uh, six, okay, six meters full load for a, uh, county. So six and a half meters full load for county. That's probably what I should be doing. Probably about six meters, six to six and a half meters of, uh, draft. So maybe, like, I don't know, maybe the lower... I don't know if I want, like, the lower 7 meters to be the anti-fouling paint, or, like, the lower 6 meters to be the anti-fouling paint. Probably the lower 7 meters. And then have it just float a little bit high, like Alberta over there. Alright, so 92 meters long. We still have to get that out. 132. I'm gonna start working on the stern. So we get the stern done, and then, or once the shape of the stern's done, we can start on the shape of the bow. And the shape of the stern's gonna be definitely the hardest part here. So we would probably start sloping in like this. And then... Okay, so that's two meters. Do I want to do it one more time? I think so. I think I want to do it one more time. I think I think we need a steeper slope. Let's do this. All right. So we'll go three meters in height, and the rudder will probably be placed about here-ish. Well, a little bit, a little bit forward of this. Um, actually, I'm going to switch to alloy now because I'm trying to keep the lead down on the lowest portion of the ship so it's as stable as possible. So the lead only goes on the lowest layer. So let's see. That's one, two, three. Technically four. I'd probably go out. Maybe another three right there. With the rudder going down here. Okay, let's just see. So that would be, we'd only get one more layer on top of this. But I think I want to do. Uh, do I want to do this? Yeah, I think I want to do like this, or maybe here. That would be a little out of the water. So let's do that.
Okay. So our current height is only six? Wait, what? How's our height six? Is that correct? It is correct. Height should be seven, so... It's not intentional, but... Ah, uh, well, what we can do is, uh, we can just do this. And that's close enough to the, uh, sort of shape for these cruisers. Alright, so we are at 155 in terms of length, at which point now we need to build the bow. Well, at least build the, uh, lower below hull outline of the bow. Alright, so... If we're looking at these British-style cruisers like the County and the York, uh, it's relatively flat. Hello, Sams. Uh, I'm building a cruiser. I sh you know what I should do is, in OBS, oh, I should get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to have a little reference image in from the depths here. Uh, let me just... Probably actually need to... Oh, actually, wait, I can do an image from online, correct? Create new... Uh, so I'm going to have a little uh, reference image here, but I am going to need to download it. So, shit. Uh, no, that's not going to work. There's got to be a way to do this, right? We capture image, slideshow, media source. We have media source. Um, Montreal CA. Oh no, that's not going to work. Alright, so I just need to uh, take the image and save it, and then I'll be good. Uh, save image as. And now I can do this. Okay. Properties. Browse. I think it's in... Download from internet, correct? So that's what I'm building. That's my reference right there. Alright, so how far are we? 55 out. We're aiming for an overall length of about 180. Okay, that's 175. We The hull is going to extend forward, so I think that's okay. There is part of me which wants to do a wedge-based approach for the uh, forward hull. I think I'm going to go with that. Well, me, let me put a property on this just to... Or not a property a filter on this just to make it uh just so it does uh or so you can see behind it a little bit should be color correction okay let's turn it down to maybe 75 opacity there you go so now you can actually see me select stuff behind it but you still have the reference up so my thought is we could do wedges here Like this. Although I'm probably going to swap these wedges out for alloy. But still. Could do wedges. I think I am. I think I'm going to do the wedges. Now, the thing with wedges is... Say... I brought it up to here. I need a waterline painted on at this layer up here. But I can do that with wedges. Um, I just need some decorations to do so. Ah! It could stretch. And I think that'll, that'll be good. What's our length? 178. Yeah, we'll get to about 180 in terms of uh, length, which is probably right about where I want this ship. A little longer than a York, a little shorter than a County. It's kind of like a... Uh, it's kind of like a worse version of the county. 
Alright, so now what we want to do is we want to go amidships and build out over here. And we want to get our side profile down. Uh, and I actually need to find out where the beams align, so I'll put it here. Okay, cool. You know what? Let's go like three forward, two, and let me get a look at my reference images again. I need to, I need to see a good uh, shot of the county below the water line from the bow. That that's what I would like to see right now. It is in War Thunder. That does give me a good idea. It is kind of rounded on the bottom. So I should probably aim for uh, making it somewhat rounded. I think, yeah, I think I think that's what I need to go for. So we're going aiming about 17 to 19 wide, I think. Yeah, let's go. Let's go 17. Let's go 17 wide. Okay, so we're three, five. You know what, here, let's do, let's do one set back here, which we'll delete. Okay, so 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 13, 15, 17. Is that correct? 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17. There we go. Yeah, okay, so we're 17 wide. So if we stick with 17 wide, this is how wide the ship is. I actually think going 19 wide's better. I think that's going to look better. So that's how wide we need to make it. And the best way to curve stuff is to use uh, multiple slopes. So I'll probably use a set of slopes here. What I'm thinking. Then we go, I'm going to switch to alloy now, to a beam slope like this. And then we can do something like this. Cool. Alright, so that gets us up, up to about 1, 2, uh, 5 meters in height. Out of the seven, we would need to go. Is that good, or do I? You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make it even more rounded. I'm gonna do another set of these guys. All right. Now delete this. Okay, come on. I just lost all that progress because it was stupid. And now I can't reverse it any. Okay, let's get let's get our width back out to 19. Okay. Thankfully I know exactly what I did, so Okay, so we were there, we were there. So we were here. And then this time. I do this before anything goes bad. Worst part was I tried to control Z my way out of it and it didn't work. I don't like it when that happens. Normally that works way better than that. Okay, there we go. Don't do that. Get rid of you. And then let's save it. So dimensionally, we understand what we're doing here. Uh, I need to use the bathroom because I just drink a lot of water. So I will be right back. But yeah, we're making our first signs of progress. Which is excellent. So yeah, be right back. Uh, let me actually bring this down a bit. Okay, be right back.
All right, I am back, and I can uh, continue to resume construction on uh, the Montreal class cruisers here. Montreal class cruiser, I should say. Singular, not, you know, multiple, not plural. All right, so I believe, what, that's one, two, okay, that's six high. So then that is seven right there. And above this, we would have the uh, water line marker, or the kind of the end of the anti-fouling paint. Is this for anti -foul I think this anti-fouling paint's the same as uh, the other ones. I think my kin to ship starter is based on the paint scheme of uh, the Coat St. Luke class destroyer, but I will probably have to grab additional paints from Alberta and other uh, vessels. All right, so now that we have this, what the next goal is, is to, first of all, have my headset not be rubbing against everything and producing noise, and actually, I'm gonna make a change. I'm gonna make a real quick change to the front, or to the bow. And I'm gonna take this, prefab it, remove it, and then extend the ship by another, you know, Four meters, probably. Will that be good, or do I want to do it again? I'm going to extend it by another four meters. Because I do think that this will just result in a better looking ship, better proportioned ship. 186 long. She'll probably wind up like 188, 189 overall. Uh, when completed. Alright, and of course I go with the entirely lead bottom because I'm building the ship hull mostly out of alloy. So, you know, lead bottom means that the ship will be more stable and actually float a little better in the water. I actually had to add additional lead to Alberta over there to get her to float as I wanted her to. Actually, I shouldn't, shouldn't build that out yet. Not yet. What I should be doing is... Actually, let's start at the stern. Let's start at the stern rather than the bow. So what we're going to do at the stern is we're going to figure out roughly the ship profile at uh, this point right here. And thankfully, here at the stern, it's um, flat-sided. Over there, it's flat-sided as well. So I can keep this flat-sided the whole way around. All right, so... We look at say a uh, cruiser. I mean, okay, yeah, they're pretty sleek. So I should probably immediately go for this sort of style right here. Usually I do like two of these. Oh no, it might be better to immediately go to a uh, three meter slope and then do two of them instead. Follow this up with at least two back-to-back -back four meter slopes like so. And how far out are we already? Because I'm gonna have to start staggering here. One, three, five, seven, nine, thirteen, fifteen. We need to get to nineteen. Oh, is this gonna be good? Or not. Because it's only two more spaces out. I think it might be good. I think it might be good. I do like this. And then like this. I think that'll work. I think that'll be close enough to what I want. Oh, hey, we actually can go out another block. Okay, cool. I, I must have miscalculated stuff. I think I keep skipping 11, like, mentally, for whatever reason. Maybe 11's just not a number to me. I don't know.
And now we're at our uh, full width. And two blocks off. Okay, fix it. Cool. You know what? I'm going to leave that two deleted there, just in case I can make this more efficient by deleting these blocks up here. All right, yes, we got that in. And now we got to work from the bow. So we're actually going to start here. Going to start one block below the top. I mean, we could always start at the top with these. No, no, that's dumb. That's not a good shape right there. That's a horrible shape. So what I should be doing is... This is rough. This is actually difficult going with this uh, style of bow because it's it's very difficult to get what you want out of it. I'd always do something like this. I mean, I guess technically more like this. Oh, you know, we go with a two meter offset. I mean, that's technically waterline right there, but, you know, it'll work. Okay. This will give us a nice, uh, sleek bow look. probably what we want. Something a little sleeker looking. How many more blocks do we have to move out? Two more. Two more blocks to the side. Okay. How does this look? For an overall hull shape. Ah, uh, not particularly bad. I'll accept it. I think that's a good, or good hull shape. And as I was saying, um, with these, I was smart to do what I did there, because I can make this a little bit more efficient. All right, save this. So now we have another extremely complicated task. And that is figuring out how to merge, kind of merge the uh, sides of it to the bow and merge the sides of it to the stern. Which is, yes, a very complicated task to do. Now what I'm going to start by doing is I'm actually going to start by um, extending out our midsection here along as much of the side of the ship as I can. We go to our lead down here. Right. One more. Awesome. There we go. Alright, so now our mid a midship's profile has been extended forward and backwards. At which point we can start doing the uh, merging. Alright, so... We're going to have to partially start from the bow, and we're going to have to partially start from this, or from this section here to merge them. I'm going to start from this section right here, and what I'm going to start by doing is I'm going to actually shift this over. Now... As much as I'm shifting this over like this right now, it should be noted 
that what's going to wind up happening is I am going to swap, or I am going to put a uh, mimic, or not a mimic, a uh, decoration right here, so that this weird section here is going to look smooth. And this will allow me to bring it in once or twice. I'll probably bring it in twice. Um, and I'll do this on both sides as well. No, hope, I'm hoping to be able to get to the superstructure today. That's kind of the goal. No, the goal is always the superstructure. Get that done. But ultimately, you know, getting getting a good hull shape done is a little, little tricky to do. It has got to come first. As uh, the partly mimicked hull idea. Yep. I mean... It's not the first time I would have done it, so... Okay, don't do that. Do this. And then this. And then this. That'll work. Which, uh, if I go to Alberta... I believe I do have some parts I can grab from her, although these are only for a 3 meter high piece. Um, but I could swap them out for a 4 meter. But yeah. That's what this is right here. Don't sink. Montreal, you were not supposed to sink. I mean, to be fair, it doesn't have any buoyancy yet. The only buoyancy it's getting is from the alloy. So, it's not exactly able to float at the moment. It will be able to float once the uh, hull's done. Alright. Inverted... There, do this. And this. And this. And now do that all again. Although I can't do it on the lower layer just yet. Alright, so that's doing the same thing again. Ooh, ooh, I don't want to do this. I don't, I don't want to do this. I want to do it to here. I don't. I don't want to do it on the other side, because it's getting a little too close to the stern. I think on the bow, I'm able to get away with it more, just due to how I have that profile. But not on the stern. On the stern, I can get out to here just fine, but I don't think I can get any further back, because this is going to require a much more complicated shape. Okay. Did I get the inside? Well done, yes I did. So what I want to do now is I want to go to lead. And I actually want to start with transitions. I think I need the offset left here. And this one I'm not going to mimic. I'm not going to mimic these bottom transitions. They don't look too bad when uh, done. So it's just like, eh, it's not worth the effort. So we'll do two transitions like this. Actually, I'm going to... I'm not going to do this transition right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to instead reduce it down to a 3 meter. Actually, I shouldn't do it like that. I should do one of these transitions. Like so. Yeah, okay, that's looking fairly good. And then back here, I can take these and then just do slopes like this all the way back. Okay, uh, that's not looking bad so far. Alright, so let's start. Do we want to start on the bow or the stern? I think I'm going to start on the bow. So I'm going to... I'm going to be looking at the forward bow right here and trying to figure out how best to basically go from this shape here to that shape over there. And that's always a difficult part. And this is one of the trickiest parts to get uh, basically any ship to look right with. I'm I'm not even that great at it. I'm actually gonna do another transition here. Well, there's part of me which wants to say like maybe the ship would have sonar. It probably would have sonar, given that 
you know, this would be a nine. Well, the rebuild would have been in 47. So she actually probably would have something. But what I might do is I might just uh, make that a decoration. Add it on. Okay. I can get away with this. Do I want to get away with this, though? Probably not, because I probably want to swap out for, like, this. So this does kind of hard confine me to this uh, style of building here. Now I can do, there is some uh, interesting stuff I can do. Like uh, three to four meet, well I would say three to four meter transition there, but no, it would have to be back here, probably one, one block down. Which I will do. And then this would be a 4 meter offset now. Uh, this guy would be a 3 and then a 4. And now already we're kind of running into issues. I'm not going to put that block in just yet. Um, I will allow myself to be hard confined to this for the top uh, few layers here. But I'm not going to necessarily allow that to happen for these lower layers. Although, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it down here. Let's do another 3 meter to 4 meter transition right there. Yeah, okay, so that's slightly sloped in. And then we can do another set here. And we still have, we still have the room to merge it with the uh, other stuff, so that's good. I'm perfectly accepting of that. Okay, it's just right down here where the issues lie. But, you know, let's get the upper portion done first. So, at some point... Probably here. We're gonna need to take this, and then we're gonna need to, like, or have a set of beams going across, leading into there. I think that is gonna be a good good location for it. Uh, but what I'm gonna do here is, I'm actually gonna do four meter offsets all the way down. Well, four blocks down, like so. All right, then do this. Do all of that. And we are going to need an additional block set in here. Okay, so there's kind of our transition from this to that. But now we need to work on the lower two layers. Which is going to start like this. And ultimately just kind of track along here for the moment. I think at some point this is also going to have to go and merge a little oddly with this piece here. But that's fine. Ah, uh, there's... I kind of wish I could merge these two pieces together better, but, eh, uh, well, I can't. Alright, so now we get into the lower portion of the craft. So let's do this. Actually, no, these should be all lead at this point, because this is the actual bottom layer. And the whole bottom layer should be lead. So, here's where we start making use of some transitions. So, I'm going to do 1 meter to 2 meter first. We'll stop there. We're going to do a 2 meter offset. Going to go out here. Now we do 2 to 3 meters.
And now we take our 3 meter, go here. We do a 3 meter offset. And then I think we're just going to be able to merge it. Yes. Alright, so there's the bow shaping done. Um, I do need... Th okay, the underside here is always just going to be a little choppy. Um, it's not super important. I am much more worried about these sections right here, but I am going to be able to fix those. Alright, save the design as we have the uh, bow done. Or bow shape. Yeah, bow shaping done. I'm curious now, how big is the ship going to be in comparison to uh, Alberta over there? Because I think she might actually be longer. I mean, Alberta is old, but yeah. Alright, so now we have the interesting part. The much more difficult part to pull off, and that is the stern. So there is one thing I want to add on here first. It is a prefab. That would be my rudder control system. And the rudder is going to go in here, so the rudder control system should be right there. Just to make sure you guys... I think you guys have enough range to reach this block down here. I think that's what you were designed specifically for. You know what, let's put the rudder in right now. Let's do it. That would be sub-objects. We need a spin turn block, we need it around this way. Uh, the rudder should be red, so I will leave this this color and then we go to large rudders and I'm gonna try to get something heavily inspired by a uh, county okay you know what let's let's extend the rudder back like so I'm gonna do a little bit of a round sec a rounded section right there Uh, here, it's like, I want to do more like this, there, but I'm probably just going to leave it uh, flat like so. And then, where's our bottom layer? This is actually our bottom layer, so I should just immediately curve it. All right, that's our rudder. That'll work. Yeah, that'll work well enough for steering the vessel. Okay, so we need to get a bit better of a shape, or we need to uh, figure out how best to uh, merge the stern and that section. And fortunately, with sterns, you kind of have to do it in two parts. You got the part above the rudder, and then you got the part behind the rudder. Well, okay, the part above the rudder and the part in front of the rudder, technically. Cause then you got to merge them in this really weird way, and it never works. It like if we if I look at Alberta's stern, it's not the smoothest thing in the world. It's really not. Her stern's kind of shit. Get out of the water. Okay. So, uh, thankfully, I think we can start this out with the transition. And have that work. We are not going to be able to repeat that success, however. Just because of how the next uh, block is shaped. So we'd probably want to do this. is a way to merge these, I believe. We do this. Yeah, they'll merge. Because that does get us part of the top layer done. Or at least figured out. And then we should probably actually leave it sloped like this. Or at least this portion. Yeah, okay, I'll leave that portion sloped at some point either here 
or here, and I think it's going to be here. I need to put this in. Yeah. And then let's get our triangle corner in here, and then our beam alloy in here, so we can get the proper merger down. All right, so there we go. We got the very top layer done of all this. Man, sterns are always rough. This has got to be the roughest part of a FDD shipbuilding. Because I could do this. Um, the other thought is that we uh, stagger transitions. At which point I would have to probably stagger this one back here. So I either do that or... We do this. I'm legitimately not sure which one's worse. Wait, what if we did this and then staggered transition? We might actually be able to make this smooth. Hold on. There we go. I know what I'm doing. I, sh I should have done this on Alberta. Slope and transition stagger. That is such an odd way to go about things. It's just one of those. It's one of those things you just don't think of. But I mean, it's working somewhat. It's working well enough. Okay. Although, it might be better to slope. I think it's going to be better to slope here again, actually. Just given the geometry of this. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's better. Alright, so I'm not going to mess with the next section yet, because I want to mess with down here first. And this is going to be tricky. So what I'm actually going to do is, I actually think it's worthwhile to do something like this. Given the shape we're working with, but I may want to, I may want to offset it. Wait, hold on, I can get clever here. Make it smoother. Yeah, okay, that'll make it smoother. Okay, so now we have the section kind of going down right about here. So I can I can't always do this. Extend it out like so, but we are going to have to start pulling it back. So there's two thoughts. We could start with transitions. Let's start with transitions and then work our way into uh the other thing. Uh so proper slopes. Oh no, it wouldn't really do this, would it? No, cuz it would be it would already be heavily sloped. So we'd probably be starting out more with this. And already this is getting, you know, very complicated. But then it's like we need to merge it better. Here's a thought. Delete that. Go to transition. Three meter offset. Uh, we need to do a bottom layer here too.
But let's go to another offset like so. Okay, you need to be this. You need to be that. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I need to get away with a second set of offsets. Just to kind of get this extended out. So we can have this portion here, you know, which is a little more bulging, and then these portions to the side, which aren't. But even so, we do need to get this m properly merged with the side of the hull. Okay. That, that might start working here soon. Get rid of those for now. Okay, put that in. Now let's see what uh, how clever we can get with this. I'm thinking we do a three meter square corner. Right there, as weird as that sounds. Put a triangle corner. Can we do a 3 meter to 4 meter slope transition here? No. No, we can't. We'll do a 4 meter offset, I think, so it's going to be best. Oh, probably wants to do that. Here's what we should do. Lead. Do a slope like this. And then, now we go with the, uh, let's go inverted, and then let's go to this. Okay, 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 this is, this is kind of working. This, this is probably working a lot better than what I had on Alberta. Now at some point I am going to have to stick propeller shafts through here. Okay, so this is going to be another one of these sections. I'm going to notice a bit of an issue. Okay, here's here's what I should do. I should do this. I'm getting a little sniffly suddenly. I'll get rid of that. I'll do the bottom layer last. And try to make the bottom layer merge better. Okay. You know, there's some other weird thoughts about what if we like went with inverted three and then inverted two. What, what, okay, two inverted threes and an inverted two. And then that merges well right there. Wait, no, that needs to be another inverted three. It's a little interesting of a profile, but I think it'll work. I mean, it's mostly hidden underwater anyways. Um, unless, like, I have to draw a capsize, or have to turn this into a capsizing image. But, you know, for its purpose, I think that'll work well enough. It's close enough to what I want. Uh, so now we go down here. How long have I been live for? Only a bit more than an hour. Not too bad. I thought I was just checking Discord. Alright, anyway, yeah, uh, let's go to this. I, I had a ping on Discord and had to check what it was. Just someone in the Ruleways to Discord, because I posted it there.
I posted the stream link there. All right, so I'm going to do a uh, 4 meter to 3 meter offset right here, which is here. Here. Bam. Bam. We'll do normal 3 meter offsets starting here. Okay, you know what? I'm used to hitting the right one, so I'm going to swap to a 3 meter offset right, and then we'll do a not a 2 meter offset, we'll do a 2 to 3 right there, and then a 1 to 2 right here. And our slopes. Okay, there we go. The bow and stern underneath the water are both done. Which is, I mean, this is huge progress. This is huge progress, especially for how quickly it's gone. Like, normally this takes me a lot longer than this. So that's a very good sign. What we need to do now is we need to fill, the, fill in the rest of this. Okay, so we have three there, and then two little things of one right here. Look at that, the underwater section of the hull is done on Montreal. Well, okay, almost done. There's one little fix we need. But first of all, let's put an air pump in it so she actually floats. Alright, so that one little fix is decorations. And I'm going to need to go to uh, good old Alberta over here and steal some from her. Okay. Okay, reduce the width down. And I'm going to grab right here. Okay, so we know how the piece is aligned. I'm only going to place one down for the moment, because I do need to adjust it. I'm not going to... Um, what? what was I going to say? I'm not going to mirror the hull. Alright, let's place that there. We're almost, we're almost there. Control X. So, let's see. Alloy. Our up-down scaling is 4. So if I go to an alloy... Uh, Triangle corner left four meters and uh, alloy inverted left four meters. That will fix that for me, and then you will get applied with mirror over here. Apply with mirror. I will copy this one and take it and paste it there, then apply this with mirror. And now we have a uh, copyable decorations. So I can just smooth out the hull. Okay, so I need the uh, forward one for this so I so I can get by with one less decoration. Be you. All right, so there's those sections taken care of. So that's looking a lot smoother now. Um, there's still some rough patches, particularly on the stern, but you know, I'm not bothering. It's a little too complicated of geometry to just go in and fix. The fact that I even got it to the state it's in is uh, pretty good, given my usual work on that. I'm going to save her now. Let's actually, you know what, let's take a look. Let's take a look from above. So there's uh, Montreal next to Alberta. Montreal is uh, a bit more, or a bit longer, but a bit slimmer than Alberta is, which is to be expected. Uh, given that that's typically how uh, cruisers worked at this point in time. Albert is an older, uh, kind of like half battleship, half, or half battle cruiser. I bet Prince Edward Island will probably, or Prince Edward Island when I finally get to converting Alberta into her, uh, not really sister, but kind of half sister. Um... 
will probably be about the same length as this. Because I know what I'm going to do for that is... I'm basically going to cut... Or to get Prince Edward Island, another ship I need to build, I'm going to cut Alberta in half. Down here. Okay, I'm going to prefab, like, the stern. I'm going to cut her in half. Move the stern out, maybe an additional, like, 8 to 12 blocks. Put it back on. Probably 12 blocks. Put it back on. Um, fix the section here. Um, basically, get the superstructure to look roughly the same. And then give her an additional uh, aft turret. And uh, just figure out everything else I need to do with her to get her to look like a Prince Edward Island. But I'll probably keep, like, the main superstructure here and this bit the same if I can or if I can so help it but yeah that's uh, another plan for getting all these ships done alright so the next step is to work on the water line and thankfully I think I'm just going to be able to keep this a uh, fairly straight block or yeah, straight block section like this. So I'm going to ask you guys a question. Or a question here real quickly. Do you guys want me to make a camouflage on this stream? Like, like a custom camouflage for, you know, this ship and other ships to use? Because... I will do that once I have the hull sh or once I have the hull shape of this ship done if you guys actually want me to. If you guys don't want me to, I won't do it. Um and just use one of the ones I already have. But if you guys want me to do that and if you guys have any suggestions for it, I'm open. Alright, let's uh, continue to go back like so. Why not? You, you count for 33% of the viewers. Hey, 33% is pretty significant for a live stream. I don't know who the other two are. One of them is Sam's, well now 50%. Yeah, this doesn't seem to be one of my more watched ones, probably because I'm not doing campaign. Probably because it took so long to uh, actually get into this all. Like retweeted or anything? No, I know I tweeted out that I was streaming this, but... It doesn't seem to have done anything. Alright, so we've got... We've gotten that done. Now we gotta work on the upper portion. Ooh, I'm gonna need to put some shear on this ship. Um, obviously I don't do that yet. I need to get the internals worked out first. Cause just, it's just easier to build a ship up from, uh, you know, the lower level. Oh, not the lower level. The, uh, it's easier to build a ship up from the keel. Keel up rather than to try anything different. In my opinion. All right, so I think if we go eight meters here, I'm probably gonna keep her like six or five meters out of the water at the stern. But I think I can get, yeah, I can get by with eight meters on the bow. Um, it looks like the, for example, the counties were a little taller at the bow, uh, or like they were taller at the bow than their drought was or draft was. Although, to be fair, our draft should be deceptive. This ship should be floating a little bit high out of the water. Okay. So... Just kind of keep sloping here. Do this. Okay, I'll build it up to about there. Twitch is having a moment. I see about six other people in chat. I see one person in chat. But, yeah. I don't know. 
I've only seen one other message in chat, I should say. It could be glitching. Ah, alright. Let's continue this pattern up. Alright, so actually, you know what? Wait, no, that's a three right there. You know what? We can actually just stack three of these at once and then move on to the next section and then get the higher section so that I don't have to keep uh, swapping blocks so much. Because this should... or this should work. It should also be noted that um, once I get uh, this hole done, I can use this... I'll probably what I'll probably do is I'll probably get both the hall and like the armor scheme done, but I'll be able to use it in both the Montreal and the uh, Toronto design. I mean, obviously, I'm only intending on you know building one of them today, Montreal, but you know having or leaving it in a partially completed state, calling it Toronto, and then switching back to Montreal, you know, might be valid. It's probably a strategy I will use so that when I do build uh, Toronto, you know, it's just I don't have to partially deconstruct the hall or anything. But yeah, if you have any camo uh, suggestions, like uh, ones which would look really nice on mostly British ships, like British uh, style Dazzle camo. Or British style World War II Dazzle camo, I guess is what I'm looking for mostly here. Um, although going a little American might not be too bad either. I think I'd allow it. Um, I'd, I'd allow something which is kind of like a mix of maybe British and American too. If there is, you know, something interesting I can do there. much as I am building this up, I should probably think that the hull would drop down amidships. Actually, if I look at the ship, I would drop down towards the aft end. Is that true on, uh, is that true on Toronto as well? Okay, Toronto is supposed to be a flat deck. So I'll probably have to, uh, Modify some of the top deck of the hull when converting from one ship to the other. Like Toronto maybe gets, you know, I mean Toronto would still have sheer, but uh, maybe it would be something where I trim it down a couple of blocks. Or something. Okay, that's not looking bad so far. I think I'll make her, uh, what, five meters out of the water towards the stern. Okay, so we know we can get to roughly here. Okay, five. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can get away with something better. What? Oh shit. That's when it last saved it. Alright, there we go. Oh, come on. There we go. Cool. I mean, yeah, it isn't until the stern section that the ship actually does start uh, decreasing, so I should be able to build that out. Uh, the Not the ship, though top portion of the hull kind of starts moving in. Okay, so if we look at, say, a county, um, it is, at the at the stern end, it is slightly sloped upwards. Uh, so it looks like what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a block down here, and then I'm going to put a slope in, like this. 
and then I'll figure out specifically how to get this to look nice uh, after I've done this layer here. Man, I'm actually getting hungry now, interestingly. I was not hungry when I was, like, getting the stream set, set up. It's not... I don't even think it's been two hours of live streaming and I'm already like, ooh, I need food. It's weird. I'll say how long go without food, and if I can't go particularly long without food, then I'll uh, probably just, like, quickly make myself a burrito, be right back, eat it, eat it either on stream or, um, you know, while the stream is in be right back mode, and then be like, okay, I'm back now. Uh, I'm not there yet, but... Getting closer. Getting closer than I want to be to doing that, or needing to do that. Right. I think this will work well enough for representing what I want it to represent. Should, hopefully it'll kind of trick the eye. But there's some other thoughts on how to get this to work a little better. Let's do... let's do one of these guys. Right here. Wait, instead of that... Right there, let's get rid of you, let's get rid of you. And you, and you, and then let's do one... Here, and then another one here. Okay, so the transition here is a little flatter, but the rest of this does kind of work at creating that look I want. Which, you know, I'll accept. Alright, so for this, I'll go up, 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 and then over. Okay. You know what? While I make the camouflage, I might, um... Not, not while I make the camouflage. Uh, just before I make the camouflage, I might, uh, swap to eating. That's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. I will get myself food, but I'll get it, uh... You know, well... Or just before I make the camo. Which is gonna come up here pretty soon. So I definitely need I definitely need food to continue on. All right. Yeah, okay, that's a pretty good upper hull. Uh we do have to work out internals, but let's I'll do the camo first and then we'll work out internals. Oh, I need to stretch. There we go. All right, I will do a be right back, but I do need to add some text onto the screen. So, in re or in regards to this, let me just do that. Text, uh, create new, fine. I want to think. How do you spell camouflage again? Okay, there's no U in it. No, there is a U. It's just in the wrong location. I, I mistyped it. Okay. There you go. That that should that should be good. I'll be right back.
No, I am technically present right now. I'm just trying to figure out where stuff is in my file folders. All right, I'm going to count myself as back now, like, properly. I'll get rid of the text. And get rid of the be right back. I'm going to get rid of the little Montreal thing at top, and I'm going to put on my display capture. Oh, get rid of my display capture for a moment, get rid of that, and then put it on again. Okay, cool. So what I was doing, uh, let me actually do this one last time, one last time, I want to close that out too. Alright, there we go. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to get another uh, camouflage done. I see there are no suggestions. So, yeah, we're just going to make a custom camouflage for this ship. Um, I don't know what sort of custom camouflage I want. I guess I'm going to start looking at various uh, British ship camos. And ultimately just kind of see what's good amongst them. If I look up County Class Cruiser, I'll probably get some interesting ones. Oh, that's an interesting one. Um, that, that looks pretty neat.
Are there any other good ones? I mean, I guess there's that. Actually, ooh, that looks pretty cool too. That's another variation on it. Look, looks like people can't decide on the specific coloration of it. Um, ooh, that's a cool color scheme on Renown. I love Dazzle Camo. Na Naval Dazzle Camo, camo is so cool. It's so good looking. That's an interesting one. Little, you know, a little more grayscale, but still looks pretty interesting. I don't know, if anyone has any suggestions on, like, which ones of these camos I should be using. I think we saw this one already. Okay, so that's a county cruiser in... I mean, that wouldn't be one I'd, uh, make a camo for. That would be one I'd just manually paint myself. Let's look up uh, British naval camo. Well, I see the link, primary links to Dazzle Camouflage. But I mean, got stuff like these. Okay, so that's actually, that's a county up there. Those have got to be counties. Although, no. Are those towns? That that's a town. That's a town, not a county. Okay. I don't know. Is it a county? It's either a county or a town. I think it's a county, but it might be a town. I can't tell if those are doubles or triples. Uh, I mean, we got many things for, like, Dazzle Camouflage, which looks really good. Like, proper Dazzle. Um, outside of that... I don't know, I'm not seeing as much after Googling it. It's an interesting one for Olympic. That's one for, uh, Nelson. Another one for Nelson. I think I've already made one very similar to this, so... That's a destroyer on photo bucket, but still. This is what I'm getting through Google Image Search. I assume this is legal for streaming. Just do Googling stuff. Uh... Before I get to making custom camo, ooh, kind of like that, kind of like that. If anyone has any suggestions on which ones these are best, just tell me. Tell me and I'll go for it. Hmm. What was the other one I was looking at? Oh, I yeah, had this. Thing right here. Hmm. Cause I kind of, I kind of do want to go for something inspired by the British, because I think that would be what Canada would be using more British-style camouflages. All right. Oh, of course. Uh. Anyway, let's do this. Let's get a good camo going here. Because we need good camos. Uh, so I want to go to this. I want to start adjusting it to maybe a blue or, blue or a green. I'll go down a little bit closer to like a green. We'll make it a slightly green, but mostly gray. Like here. Like this is a good hull color. I'll add a layer on top. I don't know how many tones I want for this camo. Looks like a lot of these are either three or four tone. Which is probably what I want to stick with, three or four tone. You know.
certainly certainly have options. Do we want to go three or do we want to go four tone? Because I think this is a good color, background color right here, but it's just... You know, I'm going with something like this. And something like this could could actually really work. I I think, yeah, that's what we go with. Well, something inspired by it, of course, but, you know. All right, so I'm going to add two layers here. And one of these will be one color, one of these will be the other color. So we need a darker blue. Probably more like this. And then a lighter blue. Probably... Uh, more like this. I'll go to my slightly larger brush. So, hmm. Let's go to this. And I need to make sure that my uh, mirror settings are good. Symmetry. Mandela? Or Mandala, I should say. Oh, wait, no. Is it Mandala? Oh, tiling. Tiling is what we need, right? Yes. We need tiling. But what we what we do with tiling is we take this 1023.99. So now if I click, if I do this, say it immediately goes over to the other side of the screen. Or that, it immediately goes over to the other side of the screen. I cannot, for whatever reason, get this to exactly the size of the image in terms of tiling, but being 0 0.01 pixels off is probably good enough. Nobody's going to notice. Alright, so let's actually make this. Let's just start drawing some blobs on this. Okay, so... Which, uh, which layer am I on? Okay, so I'm on this layer. Ah, uh, it's not quite smooth yet. We can always use the eraser to make these a little more smooth, though. That's one trick I've, uh, learned more recently. Okay, so we'll do another one here. Then maybe, you know, that over there. Although I'll probably just go in and uh, mess with it a little more because I, I would like this to actually look, you know, decent quality. Good enough quality for the ships. You know, I'm not making this camo for a game or something. Unless, you know, Magist is like, hey, that's a good camo. Let's add it to the game like you did with a couple of other ones, so... I'm not intentionally making this to, like, be an official part of a game. But it can accidentally happen. Undo that. Alright. I think that'll be good enough for those bits right there. Let's maybe draw... A bit of a shape in here or something. I don't know what to call this shape. Maybe Dave. Yeah, the, 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 this shape is Dave now. Okay. This this geometric shape's official name is Dave. Say hi to Dave, everyone. 
All right, so... I mean, I know we're going to need both colors. Let's actually just start filling these in. Oh, Dave. Thank you. D Dave says hi back. Dave, Dave likes that he's now becoming a solid color. All right, so we can do a little bit there. I know th that was sloppy. That was extremely sloppy. Make sure all that's filled in. I think it's all filled in. Oh, right there. A piece. Another piece right there. Let's try to make it look a little bit more roundish where it needs to. A little smoother. I, I I don't know. I don't think it has to look perfectly smooth. It'll still look pretty good when uh, blown up to full scale. Even if it's not. Okay, so if I go to file and then just save, it'll work. Yeah. And I don't ac accidentally reveal anything in doing so. Alright, so I'm going to add... How about an additional one, like, here-ish? This one I can probably just fill in manually, like so. That'll work. I'm going to start working on this set now. And just kind of trying to squeeze some in. So, let's start with one kind of... Okay, that's a little too dark. I think I need maybe more of this. that look better? I'll go slightly lighter. Maybe more here-ish. Okay. That'll work. <clears throat> Let's maybe put one somewhere in here. Okay, probably want to kind of keep these a little bit more in sections if I can. I'll actually go down and touch it here. This one's touching Dave. Dave does not like being touched. It's, it's, in, a, it's in an inappropriate spot. Okay. Okay, so that's a few of those shapes. Um, I should probably go back to some of these guys here. Give me a couple more, maybe in this area. Okay, that looks really misshapen. Uh, no, I'm gonna do this instead. And just kind of try to make that not look like roughly what it was looking like. If 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 your thing looks like that, you might want to contact a doctor. Okay. 
probably want to kind of keep these guys going through here a bit. I might do another one like here. Insert Simpsons movie joke here. I mean, I, I know I watched the film, but I don't know which joke you're referring to. It's been so long, it's not in my memory well anymore. Okay, there's a blob. Okay, so I do need to think about how this is going to look. So we're kind of having almost a line going across. Part skateboarding naked, then he crashes into a window. I do remember him doing that. <laughs> Alright, so... You know, I could probably get by with one, like... Here-ish. Don't curve out that way, no name. There we go, that'll work. All right, and then let's jam into the second little bit right here. Okay. Swap over to our other layer. Give me all of these guys. And then let me paint them. that a little better. Mm, it wasn't quite working as well as I intended it to. I mean, I don't have the finest of control at, you know, 100% I really need to zoom to like 400 to really get that fine control down. But I don't want to spend that much time making camo today. Okay. My stream time is limited, so I want to make the most of it. Okay, so I'm going to do another another one of these guys. Getting kind of close, to, or up against Dave here. All right. Just kind of try to make this somewhat smoother. All right, fill that in. Okay.
Okay, that should work. All right, let's. I can fill in a little bit there, a little bit there, a little mistake there. Should now taken care of. Let's do a bit of squiggly in here, like so. Paint it over. Okay, cool. Uh, I probably need one in here. That'll work. Fill it in. I think maybe a little bit around there needs improving, but oh well, that'll be good. There we go, we got that little shape done. Okay, so then here we probably need something smaller. Little bean, little peanut, little peanut right there. This is a little no. Bet Paige would. Bet Paige would love this shape. Let's do a little one of these guys somewhere in here. All right, that'll work. Alright, I will add a little one of these back here. So we do kind of have the uh, area where it's a lot of blue. Or a lot of the lighter blue rather than the darker blue. I'm doing this. Okay, so we got that in. Uh, let's do another one, say maybe here. Okay, I can put one in here too. It's a little bit oddly shaped, but okay. Need something up here, which will probably be another couple of these guys. A couple of the more squiggly ones. Shit, this is all in the same layer. Fuck. Which includes this, so unfortunately I did overwrite Dave. How do I get how do you get a ship named after you? Uh I'm not doing the campaign right now, so uh currently I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna do that. I might do that for some smaller ones in the campaign, but I'm not doing the campaign. Right now I'm building an asset for a ship I'm just building in sandbox, so yeah. Anyway, I am gonna have to switch back to the top layer now because I've uh fucked this all up, but thank goodness, uh you know, I haven't fucked anything up too badly yet, so I should still be okay. This this camo will still be very salvageable, even if it's uh not the greatest. Random LCG appears. 
Well, what's this cruiser for? Uh, this is not for the campaign. It's actually for a separate uh, picture-based AAR I want to do for a uh, previous Rule of the Waves 2 campaign. Um, if I can bring up the ship here in just a moment, I just minimize this. So, yeah. Okay, so we go down here, and then we do this. Maybe... Oh, let's do one in here. This is getting... This is starting to look a little busy, but... Oh, well. Hopefully it'll work as a camo. You, I, uh, some of your friends are doing a weird rule set. Okay, I mean I'm, my rule set's not the most normal either. So, all right, let's do this. This that one's a little misshapen heart. Uh, we need the, we have to fill this area down here. Uh, how to get a random nation that starts in 1915 and each faction destroyed gives you 10 years of tech. That's weird. But that's fine. Ships must be one-to-one -one replicas. Ooh. That's an odd campaign. I hope, hope it turns out well, or is turning out well. I mean, do you mean replicas are like heavily inspired by two? So that's also gonna matter a lot. Each resource someone gives you one blueprint. Oh man, yeah. Then you have to really decide. Like armor and weapons. Okay, that makes sense. Shape and roll. Okay, so let's kind of do a little bit of this sort of shape in here. Come on, do that. Don't do that. Thank you. Let's you start your run of the campaign. Yeah, I mean, I have. My issue right now is I'm not super inspired to try to build whatever my main base is going to be. And that's kind of what's stopping me from continuing it. Maybe ships are allowed, Lenleys isn't. Okay. Uh, swap. Swap. Thank you. So I've already screwed up like multiple times here. Okay, uh, I can do this. I probably want some of the darker color now. I'm not, I, I was trying to put the darker color on one layer and the lighter color on the other layer. I have so far completely and utterly screwed that up, but um, it's fine. It's all fine. Everything's fine. This is working perfectly. No, no need to question anything. I'll leave that as a bigger space, bigger open space right there. Because I think that's a good idea. To be left as such. What's it above? Above this zone. Okay, you go there. Okay, I'm going to hopefully look okay. Alright, so... Then you can be painted. Wrong layer. But oh well, fuck it.
Should there be some gray blotches? I'm not going to put any gray blotches here. I'm just using a couple of blues. I think the design I'm inspired by is this one. So. You know, this is just going three-tone. Although that might look good having an additional uh, layer in the background with some extra grays on there. I'm going to try that. Let's save this as is. Let's add a new layer down here. And then... Okay, I need the color picker. Need the color picker. Get that. Go to here. Uh, let's shift this up a little more bluish and then go down a little bit more grayish, like maybe here. Okay, so this one I'm going to be a little bit more, you know, less splotchy on and more like, you know, big wavy patterns. So, you know what, let's, let's hide these. Maybe like that. Okay. Okay, so that starts there. So that's where we go, and then... Okay, you know what, let's do a tighter curve. I'll see it in a moment. Okay, curve this, curve this in. Looks a little rough up here. Let's let's just do that. Let's do that to fix it. Okay, I've gotten the picture. I'm Discord is not loading. Okay, now it's trying to load the pictures in. Okay, neat little model. Alright, let's, uh, you know what, there's another way to do this. I don't know if this is more efficient or not. I'm hoping it is. It's got the lasso. And it is an amazing tool. Good. So sure, that is going to look kind of neat. I think it, I think you were right that I should have done something like this. Some uh, gray splotches. Okay, this one I'm going to have to do two paints on. Because I missed a spot up here. Actually, this is not the smoothest here. Put our background in. Let's see if that kind of helped. Two hundred percent. Yeah, this is rougher. A little rough around the edges. 
There we go, now it shouldn't be as rough. Actually, in 200% this is way easier. Don't have to be anywhere near as precise. Smooth that out a little bit more. Though that should be good. That down. So I'm not certain that this will be the permanent camouflage the ship winds up with, but it's like, you know what? I'm going to have it as the camouflage I build with. Which is also important. And anyway, no ship camouflage is permanent. I'll probably have to have a bunch for the uh, series when I'm done and then, you know, swap individual ships between different camos. And, you know, possibly even into normal greys at points as well. Uh, at different points in their careers. Okay, we got a little bit here. That should smooth out a little better. That should smooth out a little better too. Oh, that area. That needs a fix. Oh, hey, right there, it needs smoothing. And here. And here. Okay, cool. And the other side, anything else needed? Maybe a tiny bit like there or something. All right. Uh. Yeah, okay, I like that. I think I like that. So I'm going to save. I'm going to turn off the display capture as I export this because I don't want, you know, names and such being revealed, if at all possible. Because, you know, that would be good. But, yeah, I'll export it, put it on Imgur, and then just do that. So, yeah, Naval Camo Canada 1, export. Export. Exit out of GIMP now that it's saved. And now I can just go into my files. Go to pictures. Go to the shortcut to my actual pictures folder. Um, from the depths. And then take the PNG, go to Imgur, and put it into my album. All right, uh, no names, FTD camo pack. And then drop images here. Will that automatically add it? It will. Copy link. And ta-da! Just like that, the camo's applied. It's a little splotchy, but I'll accept it. And yes, if you want to link uh, to the whole page, here it is. That's where I keep all of my camos.
Unfortunately, I spent so long on that camo that I don't want to make any changes to it, so let's just keep going. Alright, next step is actually engines. We need to make sure that our ship has engines, and actually now that I'm back here, I need to bring up the reference image, which is... Where is it? Here. It's... This is maybe a little hard to make out. I've made it translucent. Especially hard to make out when it's on a background like this. But when it's not on a background like this, it should be easy. Uh, Alright, so I need engines, which are... I think I just have them in my Canada folder. Down. Somewhere. Oh, these are sub-objects. I'm stupid. I need prefabs. Which would be... Okay, Fuel Engine Canada or Fuel Engine Larger Canada. I'll just use Fuel Engine Canada. I think I put this... You know what? Let's use... Let's use the larger. Fuel Engine. So I'm not going to specifically go for a uh, perfect ship here. Uh, what I'm just going to do with the fuel engines, like this one, I'm probably just going to have them center line. I just need enough for the ship to move. That's what I need. I don't need more. Um, because, again, I need them to move th for the pictures, and I need them to look damaged when they're damaged. But I don't really need this to be, you know, super functional. So, we're going to stick our engines maybe here... One, two, three, here. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then... Do I want one more? Probably do. We're gonna stick our engines in there. She does have a small amount of torpedo protection, but it's only torpedo protection level one. So... I may actually get rid of these lead slopes here. I, I'll replace them with uh, lead slopes on the edge uh, of these sort, of these types. And then this allows me to uh, make my torpedo protection a little bit better. And let's actually do that um, along here and along here. As well as along here. Alright, there we go. We got a little bit better hull shaping. So, torpedo protection wise... Actually, let me just make sure. She, She's oil firing, correct? Um... I need to, uh... I need to actually get my tabs resorted. Chrome, come on. Uh, I have three chrome tabs now. I need to move this chrome tab over to here. Good. Uh, she is oil firing. Good. Okay, so that's going to make stuff a little easier. Because I don't need to jam coal in the torpedo protection. So she'd probably have torpedo protection kind of like this, I'd imagine. And then the rest of this would, you know, be engine room and fuel space. She doesn't have a lot of torpedo protection, but it would be something. Alright, so... Probably have it go back to here. Then honestly... Let's bring it back to there. And I believe the other one... Her successor, Toronto, is also built the same way, because they were built at about the same time. Or, I guess her companion, more. You know, these ships were only like a year apart, I'm highly doubtful that the design was that different. But, oh, I need to stretch. Actually, the Torontos was slightly earlier, I believe. Alright, anyway, yeah, that's the torpedo defense. We need her belt. So she's going to have a belt, 
and deck armor. The belt's not very thick, so I'm thinking about either a single layer of metal or a single layer of alloy to represent the uh, not super thick belt. I'll probably go with a single layer of metal. Belt armor... Ooh, hold on, I need to Google this. Belt armor scheme heavy cruiser. Need to figure out how low it would typically stretch. Armor on the Admiral Hipper class cruisers. Ooh, that's actually helpful. Potentially helpful. I mean, it does go below the waterline a bit, but it seems like, but I'm not finding out how much it goes below the waterline. I think maybe one meter below the waterline would be fine. Although I am. I would be looking like the ship is uh, floating a little high if I. As it is now, so I might have to actually have the belt armor go down like here. I mean, she's lightly protected though, so maybe only here. Ah, let's bring it down to here. Screw it. What time frame? Ah, uh, she would have been built late 20s. Yeah, completed late 20s, I believe. What nation of choice? Uh, Canada, so think more... Like a fictional uh, Canada, so think more Britain or America. Mission made heavy ships small guns. Yep. Okay, so... You know, I will delete this piece because I'll probably just do like this. Should probably have a belt armor go one higher. Let's be real. It's like to there. That looked like a good belt. I think it is. Yeah, I think that's how I want to have the belt. We'll probably have a layer of alloy above this. To be truthful. And the belt would have to stretch even more forward than it does right now. So let's actually get, um, let's get this lower layer rebuilt. Because, I mean, the belt armor is going to stretch up all the way to the forward uh, turrets. Which, yeah, I believe if we're stretching it up here, then that definitely, um, at least almost gets to them. And good. Hey, nuclear. I'm just building a ship here. Okay. Okay, so yeah, that one has to be an extra block out, but these ones don't. And you can see which ship I'm building up in the uh, corner of the screen. Or uh, when you know the World Waves 2 history. World Waves 2 games, I should say. Might be able to identify that exact vessel. Alright, so here's where stuff gets a little interesting, because we got to do this, but we got to do this now. Alright, so now the belt armor stretches as far as the torpedo defense system allows. Visual washing... Uh, SAO enemy War of Underworld. Okay, cool. Let's see. I might bring it one block. I might bring another four blocks forward here. I 
think that'll work. I think that will make sure that the turrets are covered. Alright, uh... I need to bring it back. How far? Probably, I'm thinking eight blocks further back. Alright, let's do some belt extended armor now. So the belt extended, part of that's going to go in here. And I'll put another layer of belt extended armor here. So technically I guess the uh, aft end of the ship isn't armored. Wait, did she have any belt? No, she was all or nothing. Never mind. So she would have just been this. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So now we need to uh, subdivide the torpedo protection. Uh, that should be the next goal. Now, Mindley, do I want to be lazy or do I not want to be lazy? If I don't want to be lazy, I have to remove this. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to be lazy. Take you away, remove those two, get rid of all of this, put that back in. Alright, bring that forward. I think this will be enough room to uh, represent the armor scheme well. I think I've just trapped myself in the torpedo def or yeah, in the torpedo defense system. That's okay. That's perfectly fine. All right, so what I want to start doing now is I want to start putting in uh subdividers here. So I'm going to actually start by replacing some blocks over here. So let's place in one right there. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do this. This will be easier. All right. Okay, so we're going to need one all the way back here. And now we have to build across. We have to build a significant portion of the way across. I probably want to uh, subdivide this into maybe three sections. Let's start with four from that end and four from that end and just see how much is in the middle. Let's go five from each end and see how much is in the middle. I think that's good. I think that's probably closer than four from one end. It's not the closest thing, but it's close enough. So we do that. We do this. And then that. I mean, it'll at least allow this to be a little subdivided. And now we add in our little slopes here again. Alright. And then I probably want to put this in over here. Actually, you know what? No. I'll split this in half. Alright, now that we have that, I can put the lead in, or lead back in. And then put a little bit of the lead in for additional ballast here. There we go. Then we gotta get it in here again. I'm guessing that we're going to also need another three of those in there. Yes. All right. There we go. We got all that in. That is the torpedo defense system. I mean, I wouldn't say done, but, uh, you know, subdivided properly. I can go to water. I can put an air pump in. 
each section for when we uh, close them off. Because I think realistically the torpedo vent system would not be filled with water. Unless, you know, it got hit by a torpedo, at which point it probably should be filled with water, and hopefully nothing else in the ship's filled with water. Of course, given that this ship's representing uh, TPS Defense 1, something else is probably going to be filled with water when the torpedo defense system is breached. Alright, so... I'm going to subdivide the engines now. I don't care about my ability to walk between them. That doesn't matter to me. I just want them in separate compartments. All right, e okay, this is going to be a compartment here. I have another compartment here. Some of these ones are going to be ammunition compartments, especially on the stern. Okay. Running the engines, have another compartment. Put one in here. Probably actually like double wall this because this will be an ammunition compartment up here. Actually, I don't know. This might be. This here might be ammunition too. This whole room might be. So I'll just do that. And yeah, I'll make the whole room ammunition storage. Both rooms here, ammunition storage. Um, on this ship it'll be for the 8-inch guns, on Toronto it'll be for the 10-inch guns. Because, I mean, this hull will work on both. Alright, so I will need to get fuel in her. I'm probably just going to put, like, uh, fuel boxes on the sides of the engine rooms. Just to make sure, you know, she'll actually run. Okay, so she is going to need normal storage at some point. Uh, this... Okay. I'm building Montreal first. So... This room here and part of this room would be ammunition storage, definitely. I'll split this room in two. On uh, Toronto, I'll remove the ammunition storage in this uh, room here in specific. I'm not going to bother with the smaller container in that one. I just need to make sure she has enough ammunition to function and enough for it to functionally look good if it explodes. But if it does, or if I do need a picture for it exploding, I'll probably just put a nuke in there and set that off. Alright, so belt armor's in. Um, let's look up all or nothing armor. And if we look up images of all or nothing armor, I'm hoping it actually shows me, do I place the deck, I guess the question is, do I place the deck up high or do I place the deck down low? I think I need to place the deck armor up high. Um, I, I do, okay, I do. Uh, now I do think that the forward and aft layers here might actually be metal, too. So I'll do that. You know, give her a nice citadel. And then we 
are going to have to work with it a little bit more. Still. Alright. You know, I'm going to remove that piece, swap it out for a 3 meter beam, and then we can just do 4 meter beams across like this. Okay, that works. Alright, so normally I would just put a set of 4 meter beams going across all the way up top here, serving as kind of the top armor, or the deck armor. Uh, but I think we need another, uh, like another floor in here. Now, as much as I say that, I do... I don't think we're going to be able to get away with that for the engine rooms, specifically. Alright. Actually, you know, let's let's figure this out. Let's figure this out. So, we go across here. Don't do that. Do this. Alright, so we get a nice layer of deck. This is probably going to be where the barbettes wind up going down to. I'm only going to build the barbettes down to this layer of deck. Um, and one, once we have this subdivision figured out, um, as well as some additional stuff done up top, I think that's where I'm going to save the hull uh, for Toronto, and then leave her at as I continue Montreal. Okay. Okay, so I know here is the weird point where we have to do this. And this should work would believe. Alright, she needs an AI still. Let's get an AI. Okay, we have the AAA AI, and then the uh, normal AI. So let's... We have this room in the forward section of the ship, so let's put our AIs in there. Hello, anti-aircraft AI. Go in. And then I know I need, was it main ship AI? Yes. I actually need, still need to get an AA, AI in uh, Alberta. Okay, main ship AI goes in there. Eventually we'll get, uh, what, the additional things for the guns in there, but I'm not going to do that this live stream. Um, I might not do that on live stream. That's probably just going to be a minor improvement I make in the future. I want to get the ship visually. I'm, I'm, I mean, I want to live stream myself visually completing the ship. But I'm not going to necessarily do it um, getting it to full functionality. I'm just going to have a cargo container in there. That's just like a, okay, we need storage. Let's put down some storage. Okay, fill that. Okay, so we do have some space left in here. Okay, so do that. Okay, so we can fill this in easily, and then we gotta figure out something special for the engine rooms. Just because... Yeah, they've gotta be in this level. Alright, so let's figure out how high we need to build that. Boop, 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 I believe. It'll work. Just go forward. Need a three. Actually, you know what? You guys can be four meters. Okay. There we go. Fill it in. Uh, seal up this portion. Like so, and now... Okay, we actually do have to subdivide this better. Given that these engines are not subdivided um, according to each other. So this here should first of all be expanded. And then we need this. And I do not have water pumps in most of these rooms, which is just something I just realized, and something which is going to propose or pose a uh, 
potential big issue. So, uh, hello, air... Well, okay, water pumps, no air pumps. So, hello there, air pumps. Go center line. Pump out anything in these compartments. Pump out that compartment, pump out that compartment, pump out that compartment. You're getting pumped out. I need one back here. We need to go forward. Okay, AI compartment needs an air pump. Stick it in. That needs an air pump, that needs an air pump, and then that's the bow. And I'll stick one in the bow for now. Alright, let's save. I need to use the bathroom. I will be right back. And I'm also going to grab, like, some Twix in the meantime. So, yeah, be right back.
Alright, now I'm back with an empty bladder and some candy. So that should hopefully help. Uh, hold on, there we go. Uh, boo. So if you heard me say moot there, I just stuck an entire candy bar in my mouth and was trying to say the word mute, but couldn't get it out. Muting again, though. All right, there we go. I've eaten my candy. And let's uh let's get this done. All right, so now we've continued this uh deck a bit further, a bit further forward and a bit further aft. I can continue it all the way forward, so I will do that. Okay, so we're going to need subdividing along here, and ultimately, we're going to get an additional deck up here. And that'll be the uh, representative of the armor deck, even though I guess technically this is the same thing. But, you know, who cares? Who cares, am I right? I need to go this way, not down. Game... All right. Okay, come on. Give me up to give me up to the deck level. All right. So I'm going to subdivide this. Actually, you know what? Hmm. I don't want to do this. You know what? Yeah, I will subdivide it, and then I'll just trunk them on the next deck. Okay, so in this regard, um... Air pumps here, here, here... And here... Alright, so I think I need what, a 2 and a 1. I'm going to need that on every single one. Need it on this one. 
probably need it on this one. I'm not sure I need it on the front one. I do need it on the front one. I could have just made that a prefab and duplicated it, and that probably would have been easier. Ah, well. Anyways, yes. Uh, fuel engines, exhaust, straight pipe. Actually, no. Hall pipe first. Actually, I'm just going to do triple hall pipe. Screw it. Because I need a hall pipe up here anyway, so might as well. Alright. Actually, you know what? This is where the uh, barbettes are going to go down to, so I probably don't want to do that quite yet. But before I do anything, I want to actually subdivide this a little better. Like, once this is... Okay, I'll say, once this and the forward and aft sections are properly subdivided, I'll probably leave these areas open for the barbettes. Or for barbette differences. Um, actually, you know, I'll... I'll go across here. But yeah, pretty soon I'm going to uh, put the... Or, or pretty soon I'm going to save this. And I'm going to actually save it as a CA Toronto. So that um, I can basically work on uh, the other class of heavy cruiser very shortly after this one's done I mean yeah ultimately the deck's gonna go in here it's just gonna go straight across because I'm lazy and ultimately alloy is close enough to armor anyways Why am I doing that? I should be doing... Here's what I should be doing. Four meter beams going across here. Uh, I'll do a two meter here, because it won't leak through that gap. Then just kind of leave these two rooms as their own compartments. I still need to get uh, propellers on, too, so we'll need to do that. Maybe I'll do metal here. No, I should probably do alloy, because it's just, it's not thick enough. Okay. Why did I do that? There we go. Okay, do that. Anyways, good old beam. Another beam in there. Give me some pumps. Get all the water pumped out if it ever leaks in any of these compartments. And somewhere in these two, I can place. Uh, the barbettes. Alright, save it. I probably actually do want to get the propellers in first before I do anything else, so let's do that. Alright, so with the propellers, I'm actually going to copy some bits over from uh, Alberta over here. Which is why I have her spawned in. Most notably, this part right here. But there's another mimic up here, which I probably want to grab. Mm 
Okay, so I will need that. That'll be our or the end of our propeller. But I do want to get on some of the other stuff first. Actually, you know what? We could probably place the propellers on first. Thinking about it now. And then do the other stuff. Really have to add five they really have to add five meter beams building asymmetrical like you just did hurt so much. Yeah. They do. Oh, it didn't... What the hell? Oh, hold on, I placed it what, here. Yeah, okay, that's why that top bit didn't spawn in. Okay, that makes sense. I'll probably have to make that decoration now. Place our second set of propellers. Maybe here. Ooh, no, these are both too low. These are both too low. More simple weapons for the early time frames. Yeah, I do too. Unfortunately, the uh, person who made all of them is no longer with the company. And that really doesn't help. New signs of Montreal. I assume that's in like French Canadian or something. Okay, let's uh, let's actually work on this. So cut out this. And cut out you. Need a generator. Roll the waves to f from the depths. That would be really really tricky. If anyone wants to figure out how to do that, be my guest. But that would be really, 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 really tricky to do. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this shape. That was what was there before, right? It had to have been. Or was it, it looked like this more. No, there's no way, no way, that, no way it was that. It was, it was this. It had to have been, right? Yeah. All right, so we imagine that there. We go in here and we grab a mimic instead. Uh, alloy tran. <sighs> what the hell are they called again? Inverse transitions, slope transitions. Great names from the depths. I would love it for, for it to have been a proper transition. Actually, wait, this is an offset. Um, I'm stupid. Oh hey, uh, I forgot to place I forgot to color this block. Okay, cool. Control C, Control V, swap it around to the other one. Okay, so now we're gonna be able to run this propeller through. Alright, so then here I need two mimic alloys. I need one here. Let's actually make sure our blocks are in the right orientation. Yes. And then I need an inverted 3 meter there. Okay. Alloy triangle, left uh, 4 meter. Alloy inverted, left 4, no, left 3 meter. Alloy inverted, right 3 meter, and alloy inverted, left 3 meter. Not inverted. Oh, uh, thank you for the cheer. I didn't see it pop up on screen. It should have. Uh, but yeah, thank you. Oh, those was some, those some good bits. Thank, thank you very much, uh, LCG. And uh, yeah, I will, guess I'll be seeing you. Uh, see you then. Thank you. Thank you for uh, coming here. And staying in here and, and chat for a bit. <sighs> Man, I don't know how to react to that shit. <laughs> oh, 
Alright. This guy's forward backward scaling needs to be better bigger. I'm gonna say three. Three will do it. And I can just apply that to all of them. Alright. Switching to the color of yellow. And we gotta go into uh, steam engines, yes. So we're gonna go with a medium crank motor on each of these. So our medium crank motor is gonna have to be in line here. It's probably gonna wind up... Okay, so that's where the mim Mimic starts. Mimic starts there. So our medium crank motor has gotta be here. Uh, great, it's in, in the uh, ammunition room. That's gonna be fun. Okay, two set, two shafts sealed. Medium, medium. There's a mimic, so we gotta go to a two shaft sealed there, and then just extend this out. She's moving. We got two propellers functioning now. Our second engine set is going to be in here. All right, so that's where the mimic is. So we gotta be here. Wait, no, we gotta be here. Medium shaft, medium sealed shaft. It's a mimic. And shut off her AI. So that she doesn't move too much. Just make sure her propellers are off right now, correct? Yes. Right? Yeah, okay, there's slowing down. Cool. Okay, so I think this is as far as I can take this while allowing it to apply for both cruisers. So I'm going to save this again as CA Toronto. Um, and then we'll quickly double check and make sure that I actually spelled it the way I should be spelling it. Because it would not, I would not put it past me to screw that up. There is an easy way for me to see. That's by doing this. I did spell it correctly. Good. Alright. And now save it back as Montreal again so that we keep the name. Alright, so the point I've gotten to now is the point where I'd build her up as either cruiser. Now, I could also just convert her as Montreal when done, but oh well. Anyway, next thing we need to do is put in our barbettes for our turrets. And, okay, that is going to be a little more complicated. So I need to put the turrets down, sub-objects mode. Okay, we're in the Canada set, so we got to find the 8-inch guns. And we're going to have to actually make them look different. Unfortunately. Alright, so I'm just going to stick an 8-inch gun down here. And the issue is, I've made these 8-inch guns with metal. And now I'm building the hulls out of alloy, and it just does not look right. So guess what we have to do? We have to, uh... Make it all alloy. Or we have to turn it all into alloy. Even though, the, you know, it's less defensive, it looks nicer. And that's what's important. Looking nice is what's important for these ships, not functioning. If this were my actual campaign save, I would be like, okay, let's leave it metal. But no, this is not that campaign save. Uh, I mean, two meter? Okay, you got that. Okay, now we have our four meter beams. Okay, that's a metal block. Okay, there's a metal beam, two meters. Okay, Mimic Metal, you should be Alloy Pole. I think it is a metal pole right now. And you need to be repainted. Okay. Uh, alloy Slope. Alloy slope, 
one meter. Okay, cool. All right, so now we just got to get kind of the top layer and some of this bottom stuff done. All right, so what? Where specifically is the mimic for this? I probably won't get the stuff underneath here done. Like that set of metal right there probably doesn't need uh, reworking. Where, okay, where is the mimic? Oh, hey, hold on. Is that a metal block right there? Oh, that's a metal beam. Alloy beam. I was finding that mimic briefly. Okay, that's a metal block. Where the hell is this mimic? Okay, that can be replaced easily. Like, I'm finding it somewhere center line. Well, we have the Mimic anyway, so Alloy, Block, I think that's it. Is it like... Where the hell is this thing? Because I was able to edit the Mimic. So those are all ammo intakes. Gauge increasers, that's the top bit. Where the hell? Here or something? It's very clearly not painted yet. What the hell is this thing? Like on the outside of the turret or something? It is. It's right here. There we go. Okay, so this layer here... We can swap this out, we can control C it, and then copy it, or paste it over here. Okay, you swap to that. So we can just copy and paste this everywhere. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to repaint every single one of these. All right. Okay, there we go. That's good. Alright, just start kind of going along here and recoloring them. And now, with that, we have the uh, alloy painted version of our turret. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to go into sub-objects mode, save the one I'm working on. So I'm not going to lose the old progress, but I am going to save it as that, the alloyed, ugh, the alloyed version of it. So now that we actually have this, I'm not going to remove it just yet because we need to work on the barbette. So ultimately we have one here and then 
two meter or two meter slope and then another two meter slope. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna remove these two air pumps. Let's just see how far forward the turrets are in, like, a county or something. I'm eh, pretty far forward. Probably try to get them... I might need to place it as far up front as I can here. Okay, so that'd be one, three, five, seven. This would, this would result in this, correct? Yeah. So, okay, so this is as far forward as I can get the forward turret. Okay, so I'm just going to place an extra one in the corners here. Uh, but other than that, I'm not going to do too much. And then because we are going to build that whole additional thing, I am going to do this. Uh, but here I'm going to do a three and a two. Okay, the big question is, how high do I need, or how tall do I need to make it? I feel like yeah, this is going to need to at least be an additional block higher than it is. Okay, so let's see. So if I place this down, it's at what? currently is the deck level. We're going to need to be at least one block higher. I think exactly one block higher might work out best. Okay. Prefab? Okay, so what I want is I want... Where is it? Up here somewhere. Okay, it's one of these... One meter... Or... No. Okay, I don't have a two meter metal slope. Let me uh, warp back onto the ship. Thank you. Like, I know I'm saying I don't have it. I technically do have it. It's just that I need to prefab it over. Uh, save. Two meter. You're going to be the two meter metal woods. Yeah, two meter metal wood slope. Okay, come on, align. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And thankfully, this will uh, duplicate easily. And then eventually we fill in the inside, but, you know, right now we don't. Okay, so our turret stretches two further back. So I'm thinking if we build our barbette four, our next barbette four further back, so the gap this big. Uh, maybe this big of a gap would be best. Which means I do have to get rid of some of this. Which I think that much. Uh, We'll get rid of the entire thing. I'll probably have to do the same with uh, the neck or with uh, Toronto when she gets built. Okay, you know what? I know I just got rid of all this. 
It's prefab time. Height, go all the way up. Take you. One, two, three, four, five. Because, yeah, that would be deck level right there. I think that's a good forward location for the turrets. Or the forward turret. I don't think I can get any further looking at it. Alright, so the one thing, or the other change I need to make is that uh, this this portion right here would not have successfully copied over. So, let's get that in. Alright, so now that we have this, we actually are going to need another one of these... Uh, we're well actually going to need two of these on the stern of the ship, given that, or just given how the ship's built. Um, that being said, I do need to adjust some stuff, so... Let's bring the height down. Okay, so I would say let's place it as furthest back as possible, which would be here, I would think. I'll place it one further back from that, because it's looking a little too far back. All right, and then we actually wind up Instead of having an X turret, we have a V turret, more similar to a Congo than uh, anything. So, I am actually going to have to move this one significantly further back. Let's actually see where the uh, ammunition room is. And use that to make our decision. The ammunition room is about here. So we could probably get by with it being maybe here. She look at our drawing. Actually, I probably wanted about here-ish more. Okay. So the deck level for this turret will be the same as the deck level for the others, but I am expecting to have to modify uh, this aft bar bet here. Okay, height, add a little bit to it. Take this, now move this all the way over. And then for the other one, you need to bring it up, what, three blocks? So, this. Not gonna place perfectly successfully. But there are fixes, so let's put those fixes on. Oh, hey, actually, this is an issue. I didn't even notice that was a problem. Is that only affecting the back, too? I really hope it's only affecting the back, too. It could be affecting this front one, too. Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Well, that's fixed. So our barbettes are in, at the very least, up to deck level. And I can get the forward and aft turret in at the moment. So I think we do that real quickly. And let's actually go into prefab mode. And grab a quick uh, turret control system. Wherever that is. Main gun control. Okay, sub-objects mode, we want the 8 times 2 inch Canada alloy turret. And there we go, we got our first 8 inch gun. Okay, I'm gonna take that, make its height 2. 
Um, do this again, and then just to put another one on the stern. Here. And then go back to our sub-object and grab another one. Alright, we got two of our 8-inch guns in place now. Alright, so the next step is to get our lightweight alloy um, deck across here on. And I think I need another subdivision. And actually, we are going to need uh, water things in those. So before I get the deck on, let's get our subdivision sorted out. Alright. Okay, yeah, those are going to have to be subdivided. And then here we actually remove the subdivision. So I think I'm going to put one in here. How well are we floating? We're actually floating almost where I want to be, so... Good sign. Kind of a good sign, actually. Not entirely a good sign, but mostly a good sign. Alright, so now we just need to make sure that these are all air pumped out. Put one here in the lower portion of, of the barbette. That one, that barbette actually has one already. So, put, yeah, that's fine. Put one there, put one there. Put one in there. All right, now we have time for a uh, another deck, which I mean, finally getting this one in. Let's make sure it is. Let's place it like here. It's gonna be even on both sides. Yes, it is. Cool. All right, now we just gotta fill in the little gaps. Okay, you know what? This did not fill in evenly. So I'm going to have to rework that. Alright, so start by doing this. Do that. Okay, I see an issue here. Okay, so we actually do need to shift this over. Do that. That should work. Okay, so now we can get this actually even. Alright. Place that across. Fix this up. Oh, I did just fill in the entire stern area of the ship there. Um, well, that's a thing which happened. I'm hoping that this is uh, still symmetrical. It looks to be still symmetrical, though. So that's good. Uh, for this portion, I will do this because it's a little more block efficient. And then we have a little bit more we gotta fix down here. And then after that, we're good. Alright, there we go. That deck is now installed. Save the vehicle. Montreal. Alright, let's, uh... Let's increase the height of this deck again. 
I will say I don't think I need don't think I need it going out quite that far. Okay. There we go. So now we can get some spin block shear at the for or at the bow, and then hopefully be good the rest of the way down the ship. All right. So I think the next okay. So the next couple steps are we need the super firing gun or the super firing turrets. And actually, hold on. There's an issue I see in this turret right here. I really should have caught, and that's uh, having to do with how the armor works. Okay, you know what? Hmm. So, okay, this starts at the correct level. Well, it's not exactly... Okay, no, this one needs to actually be taller. How much? I'm gonna say one block taller. It'll it'll go to here. You know what? Yeah, do that. And then we need alloy on the outside. So, sub objects mode, place another one of our 8 inch turrets on it. Sub objects mode, no, we need to go into prefab mode. I thought that looks like how the ship's supposed to look. Okay, you know what? I can use this. This won't place any new blocks if I pl place it correctly. Well, actually, it will place the new blocks, but only the new blocks I need. Okay. So, for our forward one over here... I mean, we do need it super firing over this. How many blocks do I need to increase it to get that? Four is too much. Three would do it, two would do it. How much are the county super firing over theirs? Ah, uh, significantly, I think. So I think we're going with three. Okay, we do need a little bit of armor on the edges, which is just what I'm doing. Okay, good, that did all uh, add in successfully. And there we go. We've got all of our main turrets in. Hey, Fallen Star, how's it going? Building a nice little cruiser here. Say vehicle. CA Montreal. I mean, look at how much progress has been made. This stream's been going on for, you know, four hours now, including a lot of startup time. And this is what I have? And a camo? Stuff normally doesn't progress this quickly. Alright. So let's work on... 
smoothing out some of the stuff down here. Not good. You could care less. All right. Uh, let's go to two meter alloy wood slope. And uh, nice little lightweight alloy in color three. So I'm not sure what I'm... Okay, I know I'm going to have to use some of the prefabs here. You know, I'm just going to do it for all the sections, and then we're going to have the spin block shear on it anyway. Because this is just easy enough. Right now I need 3 meter... Okay, I think now the goal is to trunk all the funnels together. And then the goal will be to subdivide this layer of ship. And once that layer of ship is subdivided, we can actually start uh, putting on the deck and working on the superstructure. Ugh. I need a good stretch. I'm definitely not going to get the ship done today. Uh, I don't know how much more juice I have left in me for this. Uh, anyway, yeah, where are the funnels? I mean, we have two funnels, so relatively forward. So that's what we gotta build towards. Okay, hold on, I gotta move my chair a bit. bit. Okay, cool. Yeah, two funnels, relatively forward. So we're going to try to trunk everything into these two funnels. So the forward two here are going to get trunked into the same forward funnel. Uh, fuel engines, exhaust. Let's think about this. Where are the two funnels going? So we got our... What's about the new computer? You're not going to get it. Don't want it anymore. Why not? Let's try to get it. Still sounds like a good idea. Straight pipe. Corner pipe from you. Don't see any reasons. Uh, okay, then I guess. That's strange. Does something change about why you would be using it or something? Right, straight pipe, straight pipe. Ah. Okay. Actually, this funnel could probably be Slightly back. I probably shouldn't ask more at this point. Okay. Yeah, okay. These will these will work for the funnel locations. Yeah, that, that'll work well enough. And the aircraft catapults uh, centrally mounted behind him, somewhere in this area. Okay, so what did you do for... Over here is... Uh... Actually, you know what? You guys should be... This now. You shouldn't be there. Should be that. Probably be that, and then then we can do this. I'll initially put put it down like this, but you know some of this is gonna have to change. 
later. Wait, no. I need these slopes. Okay, and now I do actually want to try to support them on some wood as soon as I can, but I can't do it quite yet, so... Oh, well. Let's leave it like that. So, forward. Um, we are also going to have to do something similar here. Which I believe would be this. Actually, you know what? Back here, let's do the or let's do the interior slopes on the uh, lower side, so I can delete the top side. Okay. You know what? I'll do. Three meter beams there. Okay, that's working. Working in terms of uh, the style of looks. Let's move it one more out. Okay, so good news is this ship doesn't have any torpedoes, so I don't have to model any of those. But, although to be fair, you know, in the campaign, that was not good news. I was, I wanted to put torpedo tubes on it, and he's like, I'll make it small enough that you can't. Or Rainbow's like, I'll make it small enough that you can't. Fuck. I like my torpedo tubes in Rule the Waves too. Torpedo tubes on anything can come in useful at any time. Actually, their armament wasn't even that... Or their secondary armament wasn't even that great. They were very compromised ships. I actually might be building this too big. I think I am building it too big. I legitimately think that I want to get rid of, like, four blocks. I'm building this to the size of a county, but it just... You know what? No, I'll keep building it. I'll keep building it to the size. I think the size will be good. It's just like, I'm thinking about it, and I'm not sure I want it quite this big. Maybe four blocks shorter would work. But I think this looks right. Okay, so let's do all the piping for all this. Okay, so we're going to have a deck here, then we probably have another deck here. Or, you know, we just have a deck here which stretches back to here, and then we just have this deck go all the way up to here, which is probably what I'm just going to do. It's simpler. Okay, so in this regard... uh. Let's do this. And create a little bit of uh, funnel trunking. It's not going to be the greatest of designs ever. My funnel trunking uh, designs have been getting lazier and lazier as of late. And this is no exception. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna do these slopes. 
Okay, so we're going to do that. Actually, might want it like one block further back. Just because of uh, how the smokestack's likely to be shaped. And actually, it's easier for me to move it one block further back. So, yeah, let's do that. Fuel engines. Junction pipe aimed upwards. Give me a uh, straight pipe 2 meter instead. Give me a couple uh, 4 meters going up so that I can visually see what I'm working with. At this point, I think we want them to be on uh, this color. Okay, so that's where the funnels are going to go up, or the first funnel is going to go up. Second funnel is going to go up here. Uh, actually, I might move it back one as well. Yeah, I will. Put a nice uh, corner pipe in. Get some straight pipe going up. Okay, so in this one... I will do the beam slope starting here. Actually, wait, this should be like one block forward. Oops. Okay, there we go, that's better. Okay, so now we got that. Now what we can do is uh, width 3, length 5, height 4. And copy this over and paste it over here. Look at that, we got funnels. I might uh, visually improve this one on top and make it look like it's stretching over more this way, even though, you know, my trunking here has been basically handled at below decks. But that is probably something I'll do. Whoa, look at this progress! This is actually looking like a, you know, this is looking like a cruiser. All right. So, okay, what I want to do here is I need to subdivide stuff. Okay, not not there. I need this and this. Okay, put this in. And now give me a uh, water air pump here. Well, actually multiple of them. Okay, you know what? I need to delete that piece. 
and not sub objects mode. I need prefab mode. Our two meter metal wood slope. I'm going there nicely. Okay, so will that sync up? Yes, it will. Will that sync up? No, it won't. Uh, but that also won't sync up there properly, so. Uh, I'll fill in that, and then I'm just going to do this and see what happens. Not sure I like how this turned out at the stern. So I'm going to undo this whole mess here and make it look a little bit more... a little bit better. There we go. Okay. Now we get to the interesting part, and that's here. So you need to be deleted and replaced with uh, this prefab. Alright, so now we gotta do... You know... Figure out the rest of this. Two, and then a one. And there we go. We got deck on the stern. And let's go into our sub or not sub objects mode, uh, prefab mode, and grab my one meter alloy wood slope. We should not have done that. Alright, continue this across. Cool. Why do I have two pings on Steam? Or not Steam, uh, Discord. Okay, that's why. Alright, so... We figured this out. But as much as I've started filling that in, uh, we do need lightweight alloys, uh, color 2, color 0. We need subdivision. And, uh, pumps. Actually, you know what? Let's just get rid of these bits here. Because I know that I'm going to place some internal subdivision going to here. Actually, if I'm going to place some internal subdivision going to here, I should probably have some uh, water pumps in here. There we go. Okay. So let's figure this out. So, probably have an internal subdivision layer. I'll have one here, maybe, to start out with. Alright, let's get a nice air pump in here. Let's actually get one in here. I'm gonna put one over centrally over here. We're gonna have multiple sections here. So there's gonna be a set there, there's gonna be a set there. Probably going to be a set here, and then another set here. Imagining a set here. 
and here, and here. All right, now we do the subdivisioning based on these. We can actually go a bit taller. Actually, you know what? If we can go four tall, why don't we just go four tall? Rather than across, we just do this. That's way easier. All right. Do that. I guess we are just having two air pumps in this room. We should probably only have one thinking about it now. Let's do it. Let's let's swap to one here. And uh, swap to one here as well. This one I'll place on the back of the funnel. And then this one I'll place over here. Ah, uh, no, no. Over here. Okay. Lightweight alloy again. Alright, so... In this regard, put one there. And then actually, you know what? I think that's a good enough room. I don't think I need more internal subdivision. In there. There we go. Cool. Do that. Okay, we got that. And then there we go. Okay, so that's our internal subdivisioning done for that uh, deck. Now we do have to fill it in, but at the same time, I am going to have to mess with this somewhat. You know, let's... I, I always mess with these anyway when I'm building the superstructure, so let's just remove them for now. And sub ob No, not sub-objects mode. Uh, prefab mode. So we want that, 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 and that. All right. Okay, this is working. Actually, you know, we need to shift this over a block, I think. I think that'll look best. So, right about here, we do this. And now, look at look at how nicely this all fits together. I'll remove this layer and replace it with a set of threes. But yeah, other than that, that worked really well. Look at how well, or how good this is coming along. Okay, so I'll build that back there. Alright, so we do this, we do this, and then that. And that. Ta 
Ta-da! And a tough fucking da. Alright, we got the Deccan! That is excellent. We already have the deck done for Montreal. Now the next thing which is needed is we need a little bit of a spin blocked shear on the bow. Oh, that's gonna be difficult. This is... Actually, hold on. I need to uh, edit my stream title again. Because I'm no longer making a camo. Okay. So, I'm actually going to load in another ship. Alberta doesn't have any spin-blocked uh, shear, so I can't use her as an example. So I'm going to need St. Lawrence or uh, Illustrious to do this. And I'm trying to decide which one I want. Actually, British Columbia has a bit, too. I could spawn her in. Either British Columbia, Illustrious, or um, St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence probably has the most area of spin blocks here, but I think I think I'll just load in British Columbia. Do not move on me. Yeah, okay, there's her spin blocked shear. Alright, so how did I do it here? Okay, this one I know I built sideways. But I, I know you can actually build them upright, and I will be doing that this time. So. What we need is we need a spin block, first of all. We need a place to mount the spin block. Where do I want the shear to start? Uh, probably... Here would not be a bad spot. If I could start it, you know, a couple blocks back, maybe here, that'd be excellent. Alright, so let's do this. Put that there. Put our nice little uh, spin block, or sub-object here. Spin block down there, and then we need to completely reorient ourselves using a piston. That was not a successful reorientation. Alright, so I'll just stand close to the bow. And then, yeah, so I can just quickly go back and... Alright. Okay, so our piston... I think... If we have it faced this way, you've returned. Awesome. I'm working on a spin blocking the, or spin block shearing the bow of this. All right. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm real quickly just going to give it a little bit of an angle. I'll give it three degrees. Actually, three degrees is already looking pretty strong. Although I actually want to move this about here, so uh, let's do that instead. Yeah, that's looking like a good angle to have. Okay, so what what we want is... Actually, you know what? Let's go to wood back to wood, and then... Okay, let's go to lightweight alloy, put on a wedge like that. Ooh, that doesn't mesh well. Hmm.
Here's an idea. Alloy wedge, one meter. Uh, forward backward scaling. 1.2, forward backward positioning, 0.1. Uh, copy this, paste it down, paste it down here. Alloy wedge front one meter. Then roll that all the way around. Okay, that's not going to look particularly bad. Actually, I need you to be three meters already. Okay, and then we gotta gotta put a transition in. Merging this is gonna be difficult. It usually is, but it looks like it's gonna be you know even more difficult than it normally should be in here. All right, I need to replace a piece here, so I need to get rid of you. I need to add that in, and then you, and then do this. Do this. Actually, this. Get rid of you, and then get rid of you. All right, now we go into prefab mode, and we grab our three meter... Alloy with slope. Yeah, okay, that works perfectly there, but if we tried to do that here, it just wouldn't work. But there is a way to get it to work. That is a uh, two meter to three meter slope like like that there we go now we got a better transition going okay so that's where it stays three meter and then we swap to a four meter slope You know, I could. Or pardon me, wants to do like an, an offset like this guy. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do the offset and then just an additional block here, because that's not that's not gonna be detectable. Nobody's gonna care that I just did that. This they might care about. So I've got to get slightly more clever here. And I am indeed going to just use Mimics here. Instead of a Alloy Beam, I'll use an Alloy Block. However... It's a left-right scaling. is just going to be ever so slightly smaller. It's undetectable. But it means that we are not going to get any of that weird clipping. Okay, so... Okay, so at this point, if I just do this, I think we're going to go below deck very quickly.
And just like that, we're gonna have spin blocked shear. Yeah, okay. The ship actually, or the bow actually has a little bit of an angle now. There's always the thought we could uh, lower it slightly, maybe like two and a half degrees. Um, if I look at, say, county class, it doesn't have a lot of shear, so I think we got a little bit too much here. But, you know, that's easily fixable. You know, how's it going? Ah, uh, it's going okay. I'm, uh, right now doing, uh, shear spin blocking. Uh, okay, so angle control, I'm gonna set it to 2.5. I'll set it to 2. Uh, a little, little too far, a little too far. How about 2.2? Almost. Uh, 2.3? 2.4? 2.5 might have actually been the lowest I could get away with. But, yeah. Why the front would fall off because it looks nice and besides the front really wouldn't fall off it would just be a little bit of the decoration which would which I might need this at like 2.6 even wow and, uh, thank you, uh, one dick dick for the follow. And welcome to the Nameless Follower Group thing. Remember, this, this ship is not being designed to be in, like, actual campaign use or that sort of combat. This, this ship's being designed to look nice first and function nice second. Actually, it's being designed to look nice first and function nice third, I should have said. Being designed to try to... You know, get to a similar build quality as my other ships over there. Man, I'm already getting hungry again. How long has it been since I last ate? Okay, it's just for look, yeah. But yeah, there we go. Um, so the shear is on now. I was not expecting to get quite this far today. I'm going to be honest, but I'm still going. So we've got a little bit left in me. I've probably still got another more than half an hour left before I'm, like, calling it quits, so that's good. I've got time. Alright. So, we need to work on the superstructure. If you see the, you, you can see the little model up on the upper right of my screen. That's, uh, what I'm trying to build. I will have to get the secondaries in, too. Alright. Uh, there's, there's no Discord command, but you can, uh, just go to my... There's a Discord button down below, which you can click instead. So that will work. Alright, so will this be wide enough to encompass the funnels? Yes, it will. Which is what I want. Let's do a three meter beam here. Is that good enough? I think that's good enough. That'll work. All right, so let's load in our two meter Alloy would slope. Airpad, could you or someone send you the link? Uh, I'd... 
Give me a moment. And, and I should really get a Nightbot command set up for it, to be honest. I have a total of one Nightbot command right now. Uh, I, I'll admit, I really do. Um, I'll get it to you in just a moment once I get this uh, slope in right here. Let me uh, let me go to my Discord real quickly and get a link going. There's a manage links here, isn't there? Wait. Ah, uh, hold on. I'm being stupid. You know what? Let me just. No, I can't go down to the description because I'm on a different thing. I don't like Nightbot. <laughs> yeah, but I only got one of his commands up, so. I used it. Well, okay, technically two commands. I used them for KSP mod or for a KSP mod list thing of a campaign I was going to do in that game, but am now um, having some issues with. Okay, there we go. I'm about to find it. Invites. Uh, invite. Here's a list of active invite links. You can revoke any one. Yeah, I want to know the code. Okay. Uh, invite people. Or send the server link. Didn't use copy button. Okay, cool. That should work. I think that should work. Okay. Let's get this in. Okay, cool. Hopefully it should be auto-assigned a roll after a few minutes. I know I've had to do it manually before when the bot's not function, but hopefully that should work by, th by the time the stream is done. Should already, like, have the full permissions. And if you don't, I'll just have to manually do it. Like I do so often. Yeah, no problem. Alright, uh, that one I also do have to swap out for a 2 meter alloy wood slope. Right about there. And then I can do this guy. All right, so there's kind of the uh, for or the forward bit where we're going to build the superstructure on. Let's get in some nice uh, nice slopes on this, and then we're actually going to have to uh, build or start building the superstructure today. I was kind of not expecting to get to that. This is way further than I was expecting to get on the ship today. <laughs> All right, water, air pumps. Uh, we need an air pump in here, just in case something goes wrong. But, I mean, it's just a superstructure element. Not much is going to go wrong. It's actually floating in the water, like, about where I want it to, as well. For the building game tab, you're just going to... Spam your creations in there. Okay. All right. I mean, I kind of have put mine in there, too, and other people put them in there. All right. Okay, so the funnels are starting to go up. We can get our... Or we can probably start working on the forward superstructure now. After I save it again, because I like saving it a lot. Okay. So, we're kind of... We should probably be looking at something similar to, like, a county class. When when were these built? Oh, I probably should have looked when the Montreals were built. I'm going to have to open up World of Waves 2 if I want to check. Well, time to open up World of Waves 2, then. This is going to probably lag for a second now that I'm opening up literally a second game. Uh, you guys aren't going to see this, though. You guys are only going to see from the depths. But I need to check when these ships were built. I think it was, like, late 20s. Uh, let's see. Because I know their refit was, uh... 
what, yeah, 1947. Um, okay, so the remaining Montreal was built in 1924. Uh, and then the ones which were sunk were, yeah, 1924. So this would be like a really, really early heavy cruiser. So the county class were commissioned 1928 through 1950. Or were commissioned starting 1928 and in service through 59. Uh, the preceding Hawkins class cruiser were. Uh, some of them were built as late as, you know, 1925 for Effingham. Okay. Um, I need to look at American cruisers. You know, hovercraft where the festers were on spin blocks and can turn and roll it and only use control blocks. That's That's neat. It's certainly one of the things you think about doing, or I've thought about doing, but not really. I mean, I like to stick to my realistic World War era ships. Okay, uh, what do I want to look up? Uh, I'm going to start with the Northampton class cruiser. In terms of what I'm looking up. Are there earlier ones? Oh yeah, Pensacola's. Pensacola's were 29. Alright, so... We have to imagine... What would a county-class cruiser built or completed in 1924 look like? Modernized in 1947. Knowing the setup. Actually, yeah, it would be. You'd have to be working a bit sideways, I imagine. And getting all the neural blocks Ugh, to work perfectly. Okay. How do you use bread boards? I don't either, but I don't. I don't care. I don't build that sort of shit. Ship probably. Well, we could base it off like a Hawkins class superstructure, but then have to heavily, heavily modernize it. That's gonna be rough. It's going to be a weird build. All the builds for this campaign are weird. All of them are. I mean, look at Alberta here. This was me having to take, uh, what? Dreadnought built in 1911 and modernize her to 1947 standards. Having her modernized in a different yard than she was built in and trying to figure out what the hell that would look like. I'm actually kind of happy with her. I mean, I guess British Columbia over here is fairly normal. She's like a 1920s KGV. Actually, that's not normal. <clears throat> Alright, so... Let's look. I, I need to Google the Hawkins class. And get some really good images of this. I mean, there are models in, like, War Thunder and World of Warships. I know that, so... That will at least help. But you know, I have to modern imagine them modernized engine design with hovercraft. Eh, you can. I don't know. Kinda like my realistic ones. The major bad just happened in another stream you think you're done. Alright. Guess I'll see you then. Uh fallen star. Wanna look at it? Well I'm not gonna look at it on stream, I could look at it elsewhere, but I really need to get this. I need to figure this out. This is where I always stall with the superstructures. Ooh, I found something. A proposal to modernize the Hawkins class. That's probably what this is going to look like. Wait, what? There was that No You Won't 2. Missed the context of what I said. I already forgot what I said. Alright. Let me expand this to a more full size. That's, that's from Ship Bucket, so... Not sure I can show it. Yeah, 
Yeah, okay, you use three control blocks for each spin block. It's simple. Okay. Oh, hold on. Oh, shit. All right, then see ya, Dick Dick. Oh, God. I'm having to deal with this now. I'm sorry, this is actually serious. Um, trying to stay focused on the stream, but I can't. Had to take a moment. Oh, I gotta keep doing this. Part of me wants to do the uh, portholes like this on this one. I know I haven't done them on other vessels, but... How did the Hawkins look from the front? They kind of had portals, but smaller ones. I feel like this ship would have portholes.
Okay, you know what? Let's put this back in. How do we work this out? Okay, the next layer would be top portion. Probably want to do something like that based on the actual thing, but I'm probably just going to put this back in and then kind of have that be more of a uh, outshoot sort of thing. Here's what I should do here. This. Actually, too far out. We do this. Okay, I think what I need to do is I need to grab Okay, not that Pieces here What? That's why. There's one other thought. Let's that we do this. And then... Change that to negative one. I don't want to handle this. Honestly, I might just work on the superstructure next time. and I think I've got to go for now. So, uh, yeah, with that, I will see you guys next time. Thank you.
everyone who watched. Uh, links to my uh, Discord, YouTube, and Twitter are down below. Whether or if you're watching this on Twitch, at the very least, links to all those are below. Um, you can click on the Discord link to join my Discord. You can click on the Twitter link to find my Twitter, and YouTube is where I upload all these videos after the fact. Uh, you can get notif the best place to get notifications when live streams go live is on Discord. I don't really do it on Twitter. Um, very, very occasionally, I'll do it there. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube, then both the Discord and Twitter links will be down below, but the Twitch link will instead be replaced with, or the YouTube link will instead be replaced with a link to my Twitch, which is where I originally live stream all these, and you can, you know, watch them live whenever I decide to do a live stream. Uh, with that, uh, thank you everyone for watching, and yeah, uh, bye! Bye.